Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited. I'm going to be showing you a new mold that I found and it's a square mold. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, it held its shape perfectly. And this is why I haven't done this shape on my videos before because I haven't been able to find a mold that would literally have like the straight square sides. It would either be blowing out or blowing in. This one, this mold is awesome. It has kind of a surrounding plastic to it so that way it really holds its shape while it's drying. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kayla. I make videos all about concrete candles and crafts. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss out on any of the new videos I post in the future. So if you haven't seen my videos before, um, I do a step-by-step -step process. So I'm gonna show you all the way from the beginning how to make this container, also what you can do to convert it into a planter in case you'd like to do that, and then also what you could do if you want to pour a candle in it and what kind of supplies you need for that. Let's go ahead and jump right into this video. I will have all of the supplies and this mold link in the description box below for all of you to find it easily. I hope that you all enjoy this video and let's get to it. So here's the mold. As you can see, the silicone's on the inside and then it has a plastic exterior to keep the square shape. Then you're going to want something to mix your concrete in. I use these silicone bowls I got off Amazon. They're reusable and really durable. Then you're going to want something to stir your concrete and I just use paint stirring sticks. It's okay if you have a little concrete on the end. Uh, just make sure that you get all the clumps that fall off before you stir. Then I use a solo cup still to just scoop my concrete and then you want some measuring sticks for your dies. Now I'm using titanium dioxide. I'll put a link for this too. Um, you can get this on Amazon. This is what's going to color the concrete white. And then this is my black pigment also off Amazon. I just love Amazon. Um, and that's going to color our concrete gray. You're going to want gloves and a mask to protect yourself. And then I use cement all for my concrete and you can get this at any home improvement store. Now we're gonna go ahead and measure the concrete. So you're gonna want a scale, like a little kitchen scale like this one works. I also use this for my candle making too. So you're gonna go ahead and get your scale all set up and then you're gonna put the silicone bowl on the scale. So this container took 50 ounces for me to fill it up. I'm using two different colors. So I'm going to do 20 ounces and 30 ounces. So I'm actually going to be doing 30 ounces of white and then 20 ounces of the gray. So right now what I'm doing is taking my solo cup and I have a little bag of the, I have the big bag of the cement all behind me and I'm just scooping it up into there and just measuring out. Um, this one I'm doing again, 30 ounces. And then I'm gonna get my other bowl and zero it out. And then the gray, I'm gonna do 20 ounces. The reason why I'm doing more white than gray is that's how I want the design to come out. I want it to be more of a white marbled with gray. So you can make the decision if you're doing a solid color, obviously do all 50 ounces um, and then you can split it up how you'd like. All right, now that we have that all leveled out, so we have our 50 ounces, I'm gonna go ahead and put the concrete pigment in and then we can go ahead and mix it up. So for the white, again, I'm using titanium dioxide and I'm using about a tablespoon per solo cup. So for this one, I'm just doing about a tablespoon. And I have a little bit left in the bag, so I'm just trying to get a little bit more out. Um, I don't like to waste any. And then for the next one, I for the gray, I actually am going to put a little bit of white in with the black, because um, I have noticed if I just do like a little bit of black, it has a gray color to it, but it definitely gives more of that soft gray if I add a little bit more white to the black. Thank you. 
All right, so you're gonna want water, and my camera actually cut out um, while I was stirring, so basically what you're gonna do is just add a little bit at a time. I don't measure the water because each color kind of acts a little bit different. So the black, I need less water, white, I need more. So you just stir until it's like a pancake batter consistency. And here I'll show you when the concrete is ready to stir and what the consistency looks like. So this is about perfect here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my marble. So I'm gonna pour one color into the other. Usually I pour the darker color into the white. And then you're gonna take your mold and you're just gonna stir like one or two times in the bowl, not a lot, and then just kind of dump it in. Um, how you dump it in is how your pattern's gonna go in. So if you go super quick or you have more black on one side versus white, that's how it's gonna look out, look as it comes out. But it always comes out really unique and it's always really fun. So when you're pouring it in there, make sure you pour slow um, and tap. I didn't speed up this portion of the video just to really show you all how long I take uh, pouring and tapping. After this video, I did tap a little bit longer, so I would say probably a minute or two of tapping, um, just until you see that it's starting to set and the bubbles are starting to come up. So this is going to be how to do a planter. So I just poured another one into this mold for you. This mold comes with a little peg. So all you do is just take this little peg and you just insert it in the middle before, this is like right after you pour. So right when it's still wet and you just let it set there while it dries. And that way you have a little hole, drainage hole. Okay, so be sure to let this set. I always let mine set at least two to three hours before going ahead and taking it out. I always like to wait a little bit longer um, so I don't mess anything up. So this bottom can be a little tricky. Just turn it upside down and kind of shuffle it around and this middle portion will come out first and then the sides will come off. That's the way that I found it easiest to do. So then you're gonna pull down on the sides and then pull the silicone off. And as you can see, a nice marble design and all the sides are straight. It turned out beautiful, I loved it. So now we're gonna go ahead and sand the bottom. Um, so I used a 60 grit sanding paper and an 80 grit sanding paper. So I always start with 60 and then I move to 80. So here, honestly, I used the 80 and I didn't really need um, anything else. There wasn't really sharp on the bottom, so use as needed. All right, so this is how it turned out. I think it turned out really nice. I did wait 24 hours, so we are ready to go ahead and apply our sealer. This is the sealer we're going to use. It's called Earth Safe Finishes. And we're going ahead and apply this. I'll put the link in the description box below. I'm gonna use this, this foam brush here. You can also use a sponge as well, whatever your preference is. Make sure you shake the container really well before opening it so it mixes well. Now I'm gonna be applying three coats. Um, I wait about 10 to 15 minutes in between each coat. I test it out with my finger. I make sure it's dry before I apply another coat. All right, so I just start at the bottom and I just go around, go up on the sides. You basically just wanna make sure everything is covered. You can do the outside if you want. I'm only doing the inside on most of my containers right now, so I will be just doing the inside on this video. And as you can see, I'm getting all the extra out um, because you don't want a lot on there. It will dry clear, um, but if you have too much caked on there at one time, um, it will start to peel off. All right, so once you apply your three coats, then you're gonna go ahead and want to wait another 24 hours before pouring your candle. All right, so I have my wax already ready in here and my container is dry for 24 hours, so we are ready to go. Um, my wax is already heated up. I heat my wax up to about 185 degrees um, and then I go ahead and pour it. 
So you're gonna want a pouring pitcher and then your scale again to measure that wax. So I'm gonna be using this peach nectar from Candle Science. It's a sample I got uh, from ordering a lot of my fragrances when I do a supply order and it smells amazing. And then we're using CD10 and they're pre-tapped also from Candle Science. And then just wick stickers, I get these from Amazon. Again, everything will be in the description box below. All right, so to measure the temperature of the wax, you're going to want a digital thermometer or just a normal thermometer works as well. So we are gonna want to put wicks in here. So as you can see, it does have a glossy finish, um, but it is on the inside. That's why I don't put them personally on the outside. But if you choose to do that, you can. Now, since the container is ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and put our wicks in. Again, I use that CD10 from Candle Science. I put the wicks on the bottom, the wick stickers, and basically what you do is you just peel off the other side. And for this, I'm actually doing two wicks, so I'm just gonna do them kind of in a diagonal. You can choose to do them however you'd like. If I redid this, I actually would do them um, kind of in a horizontal line instead of diagonal. Uh, I thought it was gonna come out a different way. I still think it turned out really cute, um, but the wicks I would have done a little differently, so there's a little tip for you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and measure this out. So I use Golden Wax 464, and again, I heat my wax up to 185. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this in a minute. Now, I am going to be using, this container is filled with 15 ounces total of wax and fragrance oil, and I'm gonna be using 7% fragrance oil. So I'm only putting 14 ounces in there, not 15 ounces, because I'm using one ounce of fragrance oil. So I'll put that formula in the description box below in case that was verbally hard to follow. I'm more of a visual learner, so if I can see the formula, I follow along better. So I'll get that in there for you. All right, so now I let my wax cool to about 160, 170. I'm gonna be using this whole one ounce container, a little sample from Candle Science. It smells amazing. And then I just take a little metal spoon and I just stir. And you wanna make sure you stir very well so that way the fragrance bonds with the wax. All right, and then I let my wax cool to about 135 to 140, and then I go ahead and pour in. That way there's no sink holes and you don't get a lot of bubbles. This is sped up, so don't pour that fast. Make sure you're pouring a little bit slower than that. Now, I do take uh, wooden little sticks. I didn't have any, so I used my wood wicks this time to stabilize the wicks, and then that way they were straight when it dried. And this is how it turned out. As you can see, the top is nice and smooth and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and take these wick cutters and cut my wicks. You're gonna want to do about a quarter of an inch. And this is how it turned out. I really like how it turned out. I love the straight sides. All right, so for my fellow candle makers out there, the wicks worked awesome. Um, I burned them and the wax melt pool reached the sides uh, within about four hours. So I absolutely loved how this candle turned out and I just, I think it was very beautiful. All right, so this is how the planter turned out. As you can see, the hole worked on the bottom, which was perfect. And then this is how they look side by side with the planter and the candle.
All right, so that was my video on the new square mold. As all of you saw, it really held its shape while it was drying, and when we took it out, it just looked perfect. Perfectly square, it's exactly what we needed. If this video was helpful for you, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That way I know that this type of content all of you like. Now, if you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, I always love to hear it, so please go ahead and put it in the comment box below and I will get back to you. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.